for your heathen study. Go poof down the air. <laughs> I am soaking wet. Yeah. It is it's cold in here. It is chilly when you're wet. Oh, when I first came in, I said I was glad I had my sweatshirt. Now I'm actually a little warmer. But it was, I mean, I just had an umbrella. Yeah. Yeah. When you're wet, it's, it's colder when you come in the air. You know, Fred? It's a little bit tricky. The thing is with her, because she's like waterproof, oh, like so she would like she's not like you could dry her off in two seconds right now. So it doesn't soak yeah, it in. doesn't soak in. So when she shakes, you get all of that. Oh, that's nice. <laughs> you saw my dog well. and the cat probably. Yeah, I mean. she'll be dry in a couple minutes. <laughs> no, we'll all be good. <laughs> You're gonna get tangled up. There you go. <laughs> Did you hear something? something? I'm glad I'm not out in that weather. You hear something? How <laughs> you just want the best girl? Mm-hmm. Don't be surprised. <laughs> <laughs> a burger. All right, two minutes. I'm gonna be live on the radio. Oh yeah. Oh, there's a bottle. Franklin's bones are in there. You come right down by me. Frank the tank. Well, she probably smells Franklin. You come right down by me. Have a sip. Apparently now. August 17th, I think. That's pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. Freya? Hey. Freya. Yeah, but the same that thing that was like, that just stays on Freya. Freya. Yeah. Freya, come here. Just like, oh, it's a Come here. Yeah, she can't get it. Sit down. That's what I figured, yeah. Lay down. All right, one minute. We'll be live. Lay down. Hey, look at me. Freya. Lay down. Thank you. Can you lay down now? something. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. Ten seconds. We don't want to be like talking about dog poops while we're yeah. Right? Like the first thing you hear is five seconds. Welcome to the Colossal Community Podcast on Colossal Radio. Heard the second and fourth Mondays of the month at seven. The opinions of this program are not necessarily that of Colossal Radio. Now, here's your hosts, Keith Hines. And we had Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Colossal Community Podcast, the show where we highlight positive vibes in Carvey County and the Poconos, and we talk about random topics. I am your host, Keith, and I'm joined by my co-host, Seriously. What up? And we are broadcasting live at Off the Church Music School in Taylor Avenue in Palmerton. Tonight, our guests for the first half hour, we have Nicole Baker and Lisa on to talk about Waystock Festival happening September 1st and 2nd. The second half, we have the Lehigh Library uh, Committee Chairman talking about a project they are working on in the park and other summer events. Plus, it's seriously six month anniversary on the show. I made it a half a year. Woo! <laughs> So we're going to get her input on her experience so far tonight. 
And our other topics are, we are going to prepare you for National Selfie Day, which is June 21st. We have fun facts and things you need to know before you take your next selfie. So uh, we'll start with, uh, welcome back, Nicole. It's great to be back. I love coming in to visit you guys. And you brought somebody with you today? I brought one of my committee my committee chairs, Miss Lisa Fanoff. She's a, my wingman for everything. So got to have a wingman when you're organizing all these things. Yeah. So uh, just uh, remind everybody that what is White Stock? So White Stock, this is actually our third year doing it. Can you believe that already? I can't. I'm losing my <laughs> mind over that. Um, it's our third year doing the White Stock Festival down in Weissport. Um, the benefits... St. Peter's Community Resource Center and the Weiss Board Event Committee. So we do this as a fundraiser every year for both of those groups. Kind of something to bring a little entertainment and fun to the community while still helping these programs. So it's a family fun, family friendly festival that we have Labor Day weekend. Um, it's two days, Friday, Saturday. Everybody keeps asking me when I'm going to give up and go to Sunday. I said, maybe when we hit five years, I'll expand it. But for right now, you know, the two days is enough work as it is. Right. So, yeah. What else do you want to know? Well, I saw that on your Facebook page, you are still looking for vendors. Yes, we're still looking for vendors. We're still looking for food trucks. Um, and I mean, as far as vendors, like people see vendors and they don't really realize what we're asking for it could be you know if you have 31 tupperware sensi like those kinds of things also handmade crafters we have people somebody coming this year that makes dog treats okay. i'm very excited about that one um you know nonprofits. we open up the program to nonprofits. they have their own special little deal that they get for being a nonprofit. i hold those close to my heart because i've been involved in so many um you know, and the food trucks and food vendors, you don't have to have a truck as long as you're selling food, we'll take it. Because everybody's got to eat. <laughs> right. Now, is there a theme? Like, obviously, when you think of something stock, it's like hippie, 60s vibe going on. We do a lot of tie-dye. We actually sell the White Stock Festival t-shirts at the event, and they're tie-dyed. Um, but it's not really, like, completely saturated. It's very just small town family friendly like carnival festival vibes right. so that's that's kind of what we wanted to go for when we first originally started it was to have it be a family friendly event because there's only a handful of those in the area throughout the summer months when you can do take the kids out and actually do something together as a family most of the stuff is more geared to adults anymore so it's kind of tough for some some families to get out there with their kids and spend some time all right do you have music we do. We have live entertainment. So Friday night, we do um, a karaoke contest. So we have a DJ that's out, and it's usually just DJ music until we decide to do the karaoke contest. Anybody can sign up for the karaoke contest, <coughs> and the trophy is awesome. It's a, a little gold microphone. It's fabulous. Aww. <laughs> I love so, that. So last year was the first year that we did that, and we had a lot, of, lot more participation than I anticipated. With people, you know, obviously it, it takes a lot of courage to get up there and sing in front of a crowd. So I gave everybody a lot of credit for that. We had a lot of a lot of people sign up, and um, we're hoping that uh, Miss Mary, I can't ever say her last name. She's Pyro with Pyro Joe, and she does Kitty Cat Concessions. She was actually one of our vendors. She signed up to do the karaoke contest and right. was super excited to get that trophy. So that's what we're hoping for—a good turnout on Friday. And then Saturday, we try to stack the whole day with live entertainment. And then in between the live entertainment, we ho we host our events. So we have what I've been told is one of the biggest cakewalks people have ever seen. Like, it takes us an hour to do our cakewalk. It's ridiculous. Wow. Um, on Saturday, right now, we have booked Devin Warnkin from 5 to 7 and Sweet Revenge from 8 to 10. But in between the live acts, we do a limbo contest the pizza eating contest, and we do the best pizza in Carbon County, which we all know there's like 8 million pizza places. Mm -hmm. So yeah, that's one of those things that it, it's pretty easy to get people signed up for that. We are still looking for, I haven't even gotten to the point where I'm looking for pizza places. My daughter graduated this year, so my schedule has been extremely hectic the past few months, but now 
She's graduated, so I have lots of free time to get on all these things. So if any pizza places are out there and they want to participate, they can definitely reach out to us on our Facebook page and we can get them signed up. Which, Keith, since uh -oh. we're talking about the pizza eat the pizza contest, uh -oh. would you like to be a judge for the pizza eating contest? Hmm. Well, for the best pizza in carbon, and then we can spectate the pizza eating contest because that's the funniest part. Sure, I'll be the judge. I'm putting you on there. Wow. I knew you weren't going to say no. <laughs> well, you're going to be in the contest. Eating? Yeah. You want to eat? You can eat. It's free. <laughs> sure. <sighs> I hope my nutritionist isn't listening. <laughs> <laughs> the pizza eating contest was pretty intense last year. I think it was 46 minutes to eat a large, an entire large cheese pizza. And we thought the kids would have it because, you know, kids, they, it's bottomless like they have it. They have their bottomless pits, but. We actually had an older gentleman, slow and steady wins the race. He just <laughs> plowed them all over. It was great. And he's coming back to defend his title, too. How many did he, he eat? The whole pizza? The whole pizza. Okay. Press them all. So it's the first person to finish? To finish. Okay. An entire large cheese pizza. Yeah. Wow. And what we do for that is we take all the pizza places that bring their stuff in for the best pizza in carbon. We mix and match and do different slices from all the different pizzas. So you're not getting like an actual like one whole pizza because you might get the you know tenth ranked place, you might get the first ranked place. That might make a difference. Right. So we divide them all up and make you a big pizza tower, and then you you go through its nine slices. Wow, nice. <laughs> you're thinking about it, aren't you? I am. I mean, I can <laughs> definitely. I know I can polish off a large pizza if I don't eat the crust, but the crusts are a game changer. And lots of bottles of water. Yeah, it's like the hot dog eating. Like you have a couple months. You have a couple months. Think on to it. Train. What's to train. Like? <laughs> <laughs> to train. To train. I mean, there, that guy that has the championship, the hot dog eating guy, he trains all oh, year yeah. long. Yeah. And that, yeah. He is crazy. Yeah. It's actually kind of gross to watch him do that. But yeah, yeah. It's, he trains all year long for it. He chugs gallons of water to stretch his stomach oh, out. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, all day long there there's just there's so much stuff that we have going on throughout the festival. We have a basket raffle that benefits St. Peter's Community Resource Center. Um, we have Gombert Family Games is coming out again with their rides and entertainment for the kids and they're doing wristband specials. So it's also an affordable day to spend out with the family. We have Perryville Fire Companies coming out to do funnel cakes and deep fried Oreos. I hang out there a lot. Uh, <laughs> that's delicious and I love it. Um, Cousins Maine Lobster. Oh, wow. That food truck that everybody freaks out about right. is committed for Friday night. Yeah. So we have their contract in hand. They're going to be there. So we're really excited about that one. I know that when they're whenever they're in the area, it's a line and they sell out. So yeah. definitely get there early on Friday. Um, so there is definitely a lot going on in just those two days. There's just so much stuff. And I think that's the, the hard part about organizing everything is making sure we have all the, the spots filled and, and taken care of. So we still have a couple entertainment spots for Saturday. If we know any local musicians that would be interested in right. providing their services, we haven't quite gotten to the point where we can, you know, financially pay them for their services yeah. but it's good exposure because we have well over a thousand people that come right. yeah. each day i mean friday is a short day we only do five to ten. Five to ten. Five to ten. it's five to ten i guess <laughs> it should be yeah, right. five to ten. Should yeah, I, don't know. I was gonna say you have it yeah. yeah five to ten and we have a lot of people that come out on friday night right just i mean most of the time it's just curiosity they come out to see what's going on and We've gotten people to sign up for the next day's events on Friday night, and they come back, come back for a second day. Oh, nice. So it's very cool. But yeah, all the information, any kind of contacts, everything's available on our Facebook page. If you search White Stock Festival, we pop right up. Mm -hmm. Nice. You're still thinking about the PC. I'm really, and I'm hungry right now. <laughs> <laughs> That's the worst time to ask somebody is when they're hungry. But yeah, the pizza eating contest, we didn't know how it would go, but it's definitely one that's gonna stay. We tried it for the first year also uh, last year and people were loving it. Like people stood there spectating the entire time. They're, oh, I could eat a pizza faster than that. And it's, 
you're a lot of talk until you're sitting behind the table. Exactly, yeah. I told him, come back next year because we're going to do it again. It, it turned out really well. I think that it's nice to also recognize we do have a lot of pizza places, a lot of variety in, in Carbon County. Right. So if we can give them a little bit of credit for you know being here, being around, and then if somebody can get a nice plaque. Last year, the champion was Three Brothers Pizza uh, right off the Bowman's Town exit. They do have good pizza. They got a nice, they get a nice plaque and recognition, so. So see. here's a question. Sure. Does do you have to be human to enter the contest? Because I know yeah. Brian yeah. Yeah. Totally yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Dogs have an unfair advantage. <laughs> but I don't know if you'd want the aftermath either because they That's tend to... True. I think yeah. the hoagie my dog inhaled yesterday would kind of be counterproductive. Yes. <laughs> but yes, definitely human. That's yeah. probably the only requirement. We don't have an age requirement. We, right. Is any, there an age requirement for the karaoke contest? No, ma'am. And we, we try to be very inclusive because you don't know who's gonna. Yeah. It's yeah. fun. Yeah. The little rock and roll, we can go frozen. The limbo <laughs> contest, there's no age requirement on that one, although it is more geared for kids because, I mean, let's be real, they're closer to the ground. Exactly. Than us. Yeah. They, they, they're they're more flexible, bendy, they're yeah. closer to, they have an unfair advantage, and that's okay. I enjoy giving them their trophy when they win because the kids get so excited <laughs> so about it. <laughs> somebody that's a massage vendor to come out, and then we can turn <laughs> then, then we can have a chiropractor, <laughs> need a chiropractor yeah. and a masseuse. So we're on, anybody that knows Weiss Park, there's not a whole lot of places to park. Is there parking available at special places? We usually tell people to head up towards the canal there. There is um, across from the, what is it, Corner Lunch? Is that what it's called? Yeah, Lunch, Central Lunch. Central Lunch. Yeah. Across from Central Lunch, there's parking. Up in the canal, there's parking. Realistically, we leave parking open for everyone on three sides of the park. Mm -hmm. We only limit on the one side okay. for the food trucks and the vendors. That way we try to keep them all centralized in one location. Because we don't want to take parking from people wanting to visit. Right. But if you go up you know, White Street and everything in, in Wasteport, you can find a decent amount of parking. Right. Plus there's the Hofford Mill. People can stop up, grab a coffee or you know something and then swing over. Try and spread it out throughout yeah, Wasteport. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 We don't want a block to. or two, but it's not going to kill Yeah, Wasteport's you know? not a big place. No, it's not. <laughs> block, like, Park a block away. It's not really like a city block. Yeah. It's a it's a small town block. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it's a short block. <laughs> <laughs> it's a half a block. But yeah, we're definitely still <laughs> looking for sponsors yeah. and um, basket donations. If anybody's interested in, in donating for that, um, we try to make the basket raffle. I mean, historically we've had. We average about 150 items in the basket raffle, which is great. Uh, I uh, I just got confirmation today that AOK -OK is signing up again to be a, an event sponsor for us, which is awesome. And we love to you know support local businesses and have them support things within the community. We let you know let them put up their banners and they're on our T-shirts and they're nice peeps too. They're gonna. Sean is going to be judging alongside you for the pizza contest. Okay. He's a tough judge too, from what I heard. He was very particular last year. All right. But yeah, hopefully we can get <clears throat> some of the same people back to judge. We had Jen Rapa, she judged for us. Aaron Sedlin from the elementary center in Lehighton, he came out and judged for us. Right. So we try to, to pull as many local known individuals that we can to get them out and yeah. get their Mike opinions. Briggs, he was one last Yes. Yeah. Oh, and his tracksuit, he was priceless. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he was priceless in his tracksuit, it was great. It was the highlight of my day. <laughs> Anything else, Sandy? Any questions? I mean, is it dog friendly though? Absolutely. Okay. Yeah. So you can bring your dogs. Dog friendly, kid friendly. Like, just be, pre be prepared for lots of pets though. Like, we have a lot of dog people that join us just in volunteers. Right. So you get a, they get a lot of love. They get a lot of love. But the one place that's doing the the dog treats, it's Oliver Bee's treats. And they're new to us this year, so I mean, definitely, if you have a dog or if you're an animal lover, swing out, check them out because I'm excited to have you know, fresh blood is good. We have some of the regulars coming out. Um, Strolls Woodworking, they've been with us since we started, and super nice and super great stuff for your yard. I know he had like giant lawn Yahtzee. Um, when I saw him at a different event, I was like, You're definitely bringing that, right? Like, you should be playing that 
during the day, and he said he would let us play around. So I'm excited for that. <laughs> I like the, I'm excited by the little things. It takes very little to make me happy. So. That's a good thing. Still thinking about the pizza coming uh, I mean, I've been thinking about pizza since before we got here, so <laughs> that just made it even worse. I didn't have dinner at night. So next Wednesday is National Selfie Day, and I have a trivia question here for you. When was the first selfie taken? 1839, 1907, or 20, 2000? Can I guess? Yeah. 2000. Any guesses? I mean, I'll go to the 1900 one, just to be different. <laughs> 1839 That's the problem. was the first selfie. They just <laughs> held out the, the big box camera. And Robert Capullius took the first photographic selfie. He had to set up the camera and stand on the stand, click the shutter, and run in front of the frame for the pose. <laughs> That's a lot of work for a selfie. Yeah. yeah right? <laughs> and I was spoiled. No filters now. Yeah, what if he, he would have done anything for a stick? <laughs> <laughs> that was. Didn't they even make cameras that had like buttons? Yeah, button. I think that so came that, later. Yeah, yeah. So that one was even pre the button. Yeah, he, he must have practiced that a lot. He must have really liked himself to be taking a selfie, like working that hard for a <laughs> selfie. Hard, yeah. I wonder if he knew like the best angle to take it, and you know. Who takes the more most selfies, women or men? Women. Absolutely. <laughs> Women take 55.2% of selfies. I thought it would be more than that. Oh, yeah, I figured yeah. it would be like 80. Yeah. I thought it would be too. <laughs> and the most popular city is New York City. Women take selfies, and unfortunately, some of them turn out into death because they forget where they're walking and they walk out in front of buses. <laughs> that, that's an interesting fact. <laughs> Everything I'm saying. Am I reading this right? That self selfie deaths? Yes, we're reading that right. You want to read it? This refers to the deaths that happen while taking a selfie. What does it mean? Sixty-one point six percent. That that's so many deaths happen during taking a selfie. That's a lot, isn't it? He looked perplexed. I guess what percentage of what, though? Like, yeah. of people that take selfies? That's all it had, so I... Ah, uh, see. Maybe it's the people that have accidents while taking selfies. 61.6% right. of them croak. Oh, either way, that's high. That is really <laughs> high. And I don't have it on here, but it does say that an average of one person a month dies at the Grand Canyon from taking a selfie. They lean over uh, the edge. They yes. lean back. Yep. Yeah, I wouldn't even be close to the edge. Forget that. <laughs> no, I'd be, I'm afraid of heights. I wouldn't do oh, it. Yeah. <laughs> Have somebody else take the picture, folks. Don't stand on a cliff and exactly. take a selfie. <laughs> and, you, and you think this happens every year, and people would get the idea. But you would think. You but would maybe think. it's because the stats aren't out there for people to be aware. Um, we need to have a, a selfie awareness day at school to teach these kids. Well, yeah. we can do our part. Yeah. All right, we're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll be right back. They've become a solid member of Is the jury in the past there? five years. Are so you restless? Did you block her off? Of no, she was known for back here. Yeah. She's, like, she's over here now. Yeah. She's just lunch restless. Yeah. Fun food. It's the rain. She, she likes the like 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 yeah. yeah. In Franklin Township. Yeah. Yeah. A wide right. selection of sandwiches and wraps. Perfect. Fresh daily. Come here, huh? So for the pizza judging. Cindy's Deli, all 245 on the 2nd. You just need to be in the park, and I'll feed you. Right. And you get to try and sample all the, the goodness. How many did you have last year? Last year we had eight different pizza places. They didn't, the individuals that I was working with wanted to limit it. And I'm like, there's like 50 pizza places in the park. We could have so much pizza, like yeah. that's ridiculous. Yeah. But they wanted to limit it. I don't plan on limiting it, but I'm realistic to, you know. How many can be tasted by one? Right. 
Yeah. So it's one of those things of I would try. I, I'm thinking we're going to try for 12 this year and see how that goes. I want to test my you don't judges. Have to eat a whole no, and most of them what they did was they cut off a piece of like the end or up by the crust, like the crust and like a piece. That's really the best part of it. Like I judge places by their crust. Yeah. So the sauce, the crust, like the cheese, if you can get a section of it. So that's what we did. We had utensils and they cut a chunk of it off and then they went through every every place. So realistically, it's only like you're eating like three, three slices of pizza at the most if you eat a whole lot. I mean, we had Erica Pagato, the coach from Lee Height that ran the Boston Marathon. She was there as a judge, and she she chowed down on some pizza, which was crazy because she never eats pizza. And she just she's a health nut, so she doesn't do any of that stuff. So I got I was like, Are you sure you want to sign up for this judging? And she's like, Sure. And then she realized like how much pizza she actually had to eat. So she might not sign up again this year for us, but she's like, I don't know. She might. She's a good sport. But it's a good time inside that we have a tent set up for the judges and all I could hear was like Jokes and laughter and craziness going like they were having a good old time in that tent. I don't know <laughs> Debate the, the great debate over pizza. So the more do the pizza places like donate a slice or We ask them for three pizzas each. Okay. So every place that donates they donate three pizzas one goes to judging and to go to the pizza eating contest. And we give everybody credit for contributing to the pizza eating contest and all that kind of stuff. So it works out so that the contest isn't a cost to us. Right. And everybody's getting you know free publicity for doing the contest. So it works out for everyone. So any place that we can cut costs is good. Yeah. You know, it is a fundraiser, yeah. it is for charity. Yeah. But it's it's only bad. Yeah, both groups are both nonprofits and you're trying to do it. Country Clippers. Pie? A pie eating contest? Oh my, oh my gosh, a pie eating contest. You're going to All right, welcome them. back to Colossal Community Podcast. Leanne and I are learning about Weiss Talk and all the wonderful joys of the pizza eating contest. I know, I'm actually kind of excited. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, Nicole, do you just want to recap? Uh, sure. The event? It's the third annual Weiss Talk Family Festival. It's September 1st and 2nd. Um, you know, I can't believe we're in three years. It's crazy. Still, I can't wrap my head around when I'm typing up paperwork and saying it's the third year. I remember when I first thought of, hey, we should do this. You know, this might be fun. It's not so much fun for us, but it's fun for everybody else, and that's the point. Right. Um, all the proceeds from the event go to St. Peter's Community Resource Center and the White Stock Event Committee, and you know, trying to keep it local and support the kids. Most of the the stuff that we facilitate is for families in need. Um, within the area, so I'm glad that we are able to do this fundraiser each year to help contribute to those programs so they can do things like, you know, the, the Bear Necessity Pantry at the Community Center and Easter egg hunts and different things that they do on Weissport, so it's very cool. Right. Awesome. Excited for it? Absolutely. All right, I do have an update on the fact of how many deaths for selfies. The mean age is 23 years old with male death outnumbering <coughs> females three to one. From wow. January 2008 to July 2021, it was estimated that there were 379 people who died in self-related acts, selfie-related accidents. Well, that's the one thing that guys beat us on then, I guess. Three <laughs> to one, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. That's right, especially when females take the most selfies. They die because they don't have enough practice. <laughs> right. Yes, they need more practice. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Did you ever see those memes of why women live longer and it's the guy on a ladder right. on another ladder leading yeah. up against the <laughs> Yeah. That, that makes a lot of sense why that statistic is so high. And did you know that there are selfie museums around the country? Yes. Isn't there one in New York City? There's one in New York City, there's actually one in Philly, and the Lebanon Valley Mall in Pennsylvania. So there's, it's $25 for one hour. There's the biggest one is out in Las, Las Vegas, and they said it could take you up to one to two hours to, to do the whole thing because they have that many props. Oh, so it's like selfie stations. Right, it's a museum with still selfie stations. Actually, I think I know somebody that went to the one in New York, and. They had some pretty interesting pictures. 
they some of the stuff they come up with is crazy. Yeah, and you know, we make them up. Right. Probably they're making more money than me, so I ain't gonna. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, so there's one in Las Vegas, there's one in Seattle, Washington, and Denver also has one too. They said it's a real big one that will take you one to two hours to do the whole thing. So selfie museums are the new thing. If you're entertained by it, I guess that works. And you can also buy into the franchise of opening up your own selfie museum. So do we need a selfie museum at Maybe. Maybe. You know, that's what he can do in Weisport with that big factory that's not doing anything. There we go. There you go. We can get a big one in there. <laughs> I keep saying keep that I want to open up an indoor dog park in there. And one half be small dogs, the other half be big dogs. Because... What about big dogs that think they're small dogs? Yeah, really. <laughs> Actually, I think there's more small dogs that think they're big dogs. I don't know. My dad has a mastiff, and he thinks he's a lap dog. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. But, yeah, you just, you put some fake turf in there, and you get sprinklers, and, like, every night, you just, yeah, like, close it down. It's a good idea. It's Give little obstacles. And, and you can sell memberships. Yeah, there Definitely. you go. It's genius. I think you should do it. I, I, I don't know. Put your email out there. Start looking for business partners. Yeah. Need <laughs> some investors. <laughs> All right. The, do you know what the selfie city of the world is? Selfie capital of the world is? Didn't you say New York? No, that's, that's where the selfie museums are, but this is the and selfie capital. The most, capital. Yeah. The most uh, selfies taken in this city. Oh. Tokyo. Maybe Paris. It's in the Philippines, I'll give you that. Oh, I don't know. Castings. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> no geography <laughs> test. I didn't know I was getting quizzed tonight. Yeah, really. Come on. Uh, we have a guest here, Paris. That was your dad, Leanne. You want to read the answer? Hi, Dad. <laughs> oh, it is. Makati City. Yeah, that's all I guess that's how you say it. In the Philippines. Huh. Random, because it's not yeah, anything I would ever think of, but I guess it's it's based on population. Okay. That's yeah. how they get you. Yeah. yeah. Four hundred thousand photos. Manhattan so and Miami follow closely behind. So people are taking a lot of selfies. Yes, a lot. <laughs> Do you have any questions about race stock? I mean, no. No. Oh. All right, thank you guys for joining <laughs> us. Having us. I think you covered everything and pretty yeah, good. A lot of things happening in the two days. Uh, make sure you check it out and uh, check out the Facebook page. You'll be updating Absolutely. it periodically throughout the summer. And uh, good luck on the event. And I'll see you there to judge. To the judge. Beats. Be, be strict, be tough. I will all gonna study up on it. You gotta be a, become a pizza connoisseur. Yep, pizza. <laughs> <laughs> That's the sign for pizza. Is it really? Mm -hmm. Huh. You learn something new every day. <laughs> selfies and pizza. <laughs> awesome. I don't know the sign for selfies. Huh? I don't What's know the sign for selfies. selfies. Yeah, yeah. Be like, no. yeah something it's probably like, like something super or, easy yeah. and we just aren't thinking of it. Good. All right. All right. All Thanks, right. guys. Thank, Thank you. you. All right. Up next, we have Melissa Hawk, the director of the Knight Memorial Library, joining us. She's right. talking about a project we are working on in the yeah. park and things that are coming up this summer. While we wait for her to come in, Leanne, it is your six-month anniversary on the show. So tell us. What are your thoughts so far? So I am astonished at everything that I have learned so far. Every time we do this, I meet new fabulous people and I learn amazing things that are happening in our community. Um, I watch Stacy struggle with dogs. <laughs> um, <laughs> but I love it. I absolutely have the best time here. We always have fun. We, we have the coolest guests. 
Um, we really haven't interviewed anybody that's like a stick in the mud, so that's good. <laughs> that's good. Um, yeah, I don't know. I do I get a present or anything? You have to take that up with the doc. Okay? I will actually take that up with the doc. <laughs> and you know what he's gonna say? He's gonna say, "Well, you send me your bio." <laughs> <laughs> so text him right now and uh, message him. Yeah, I actually got a couple. Apparently. I don't know, so he posted something with pictures of people that are staff on Colossal, and I wasn't on the picture uh -oh. collage, and people were like, did you quit, did you quit? I was like, it's probably my fault, because I didn't submit the bio, but, yeah. So call him out for not quitting your picture. I am calling you out on that, Doc. What the fudge? <laughs> All right, we are here with members of the Lehigh Memorial Library here to tell us about the project they are working on in the park and summer events. Welcome back. Yes, thank you, thank you. Um, I'm Melissa Hawk, I'm the director, and this is Jane Roberts. She's our board treasurer. Secretary. Secretary. I don't do numbers. <laughs> See, I, I goofed up already. That's good. <laughs> but um, yeah, so she came along too. Um, and we have a lot going on this summer, and also like into the fall. Um, so you had messaged me about the, uh, the thing going on in the yeah, everybody's asking, what yeah. are these things in the park? In the park. Mm -hmm. um, so what that is, is we got a grant to set up a permanent story walk. So what a story walk is, is you take a picture book, and you buy two copies, and then you're covered by copyright, because the author is getting the money. Um, you get two copies, you take them apart, and then in each one of those displays, there will be the spread of the, the uh, story. Okay. So then you walk along with the child, or even, I mean, the one we're doing, the first one we're doing is really fun. It's about birds, so there's a lot of different bird stuff. So it's, it's, it's interesting for everybody. Um, so you walk along, and then there are also little prompts, too. So like, fly like a bird to the next post, you know, or um, things that help them with vocabulary, stuff like that. So it's a lot of fun. Um, they do them all over, all over the country, and even in other countries. Um, so it's just a really fun way to get, it was started as a way to get um, readers out moving and movers to read. So right. it does both. So I, we're really excited about it. Um, we, like I said, the grant covered the, um, the posts. Um, and then we also are working with Parks and Rec from Lehighton. And they covered um, putting them in and um, yeah, and we're going to be switching out um, every month. We'll have a new story. Okay. okay. Yeah. So the first one's going to go in um, for July. We we're shooting for June, but we have so much going on. So, which is a good thing. Right. But we're going to start in, in July, and then in August, um, we're going to do um, a ribbon cutting because August 14th is our 75th anniversary. Um, of the library. Oh wow! Yeah, that's a big yes. Yeah. 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 So the thirteenth, the fourteenth of Monday. So the thirteenth on that Sunday, we're going to have um, an event uh, in the park, in the park to um, to do the ribbon cutting and also to you know to celebrate the seventy five years. And we'll have hopefully it's in the planning stages, but hopefully we'll have some food and drinks and you know games and things for the kids to do and for families to come and. We're excited about it because it is 75 years. Um, and the library was actually started as a memorial to uh, the veterans from the two world wars. So it was actually, oh boy, I should have blown up on this. It was the <laughs> anniversary of one of the days. It was the anniversary of, I guess it would be the second one, VJ Day. Mm -hmm. okay. So his moment was, yes. yeah, uh, August 14th. So anyhow, so um, yeah, so we're gonna we're gonna celebrate that. Um, we have tons of things going on. We've been getting a lot of grants. We've been applying for grants because, of course, you know, the budget isn't the greatest thing in the world. Um, but we're very lucky that there are so many places that you know we can apply to. And we just came from picking up um, a check from a grant that we received from the. I don't remember what the name of the one is now. It's the Horsehead Group. Okay. Changed their, right. their, their, yes. Yes. Say that louder. 
Professor. Thank you. Um, and that's for, so for some computers and stuff. So anytime we add something or do something uh, or update anything, like putting on an addition, um, all that comes from grants and extra money and donations and things. And so how can people donate to the library? They can donate, they can send us a check. Um, I have all kinds of stuff with me. We're in the middle of our, our, annual, um, our annual fund drive, which we send out a letter that I like to use it as a time to tell people, not just, hey, give us money, but to tell them what we have for them right. and what we've been doing. So this is on our website. Um, there's a little tab that says support us, and you can click on that and go and send us, or just drop a check, whatever. Um, other ways to support us, we're starting a, um, a volunteer group, an events, an events committee, um, to help us with things like the, the uh, celebration. And also we have a basket wrap one during um, Christmas in the park. Okay. Uh, Christmas in July in the park. Um, we have a basket wrap, so we're looking for people to help us out that day too, and with logistics and putting baskets together and stuff the night before. And so, um, yeah, you can, most of this, all of this stuff is now or will be very soon on the website. So you can always check that out. All right. Um, I'm just gonna keep going if you don't. Yeah, sure. All right. Keep going. There is a lot of events. So uh, one of the things that's in the annual the annual um, letter, two things. Um, we added this year through a through money from the state library, um, hotspots. <clears throat> now hotspot, if your internet goes out or you're traveling, you don't know if you'll have an internet connection, you can borrow them from us and hook up, you know, it's they're through T Mobile. So anywhere where you can get a T Mobile signal. You can get internet, free internet. Okay. So a lot of people use them sometimes in between when they when they moved, they've come in to use it, or when they're they don't have internet for a little while for some reason. So we have those that you can you can borrow them for a week and then another week or so. And we also have museum passes now, which um, and the mobile hotspots and the museum passes, Palmerton and the Dimmick Library in Jim Thorpe also have those as well. Okay. Um, Museum passes are to uh, about five different museums, um, and you just come in and you check those out like a book. And it pays for, it depends on the museum, but it pays for one or two or more um, passes to the museum. So that's really helpful, because budgets are tight. You right. know? So yeah, and then this, I mentioned the story walk. Um, yeah, and, and we're at the beginning of summer reading. Our, our program starts this coming week, we just had uh, we have a lot of teen volunteers, which is really cool, to come in and work with the kids. So um, it starts next week, and you can register anytime. Um, and what that is comprised of is the reading challenge, which you I always tease the kids when they come in for, for tours, and I say, you have to read a thousand books this summer. <laughs> and they go, what? <laughs> and then you always have that one kid, like my kid was, and he goes, yeah, you know, I'm gonna read a thousand. Yeah, I can do that. But yeah, but uh, you no, know, you, you just have to read anything. We give them this little, a little calendar, and then any day that they read anything, they just mark off, because um, we just want them to like realize that they're reading. Mm -hmm. And I tell them anything. You could read a recipe. You could read a street sign. We want you to read more than that, but just realize how important reading is to everything you do. Right. So when they do that and they bring us in, then for every day that they marked off, they get a little ticket, and then they can, we have a summer store where it's like, you know when you go to an arcade and get tickets so you can spend them, so little little prizes like that. It gives that extra little, you know, incentive yeah. for them. Yeah. So, and then the other part, there's three parts, so that's the first part. The second part is we have weekly STEM programs. Um, fun, science, technology, uh, engineering, math programs. Not too much math is so good, I think. But um, where they can do, they'll come and do different, you know, different activities and stuff, which is, um, last year was a lot of fun. And this year I have extra help. We have a program assistant who's helping us with that too. So um, all that information is on our website um, and they can call and register. Those programs you have to register for just because with materials and stuff, we just have a limited amount of people. 
Right. And if we if we go over, we'll we'll add more spots. Now, is that is are these events like pay per events, or is it included with like a membership? Or these events are open to anybody in our service area, basically anybody within the county. Um, we would like you to get a, a library card, um, but you don't need to. Um, it's great if you do though, because then that helps us when we try to get grants to fund these kind of th kinds of things. So we do hope you do, uh, and it's always free. The, the Lehigh Library, all of our programs are always free. Wow. Yeah. Um, we get grants for those as well sometimes, or we have people who donate prizes and things. Um, but yeah, we want to make sure everybody has equal access to, to be able to participate. Yeah. So I think we should get help get a grant to bring back the Book It program. Oh, book it. I yes. love Book It. It's fun to book it to me. That's where you read a certain amount of books mm -hmm. and then you would get like a, a free personal pizza at oh, Pizza Hut. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Books, yeah. something I thought we brought that back for the summer. Cool. I thought there was I something know. I read about that. I, I would build it on your own with like a local pizza place though. Yeah. Because you. Pizza Hut, you can't sit in there and eat anymore. Right. And it would be more fun to support a local business yeah. than a chain yeah. anyway. That's a good idea. It's if there are idea. any pizzerias listening tonight, call me, email me. Yeah, yeah. So you can set something up. Heck yeah. yeah. I, read, books. I read books for pizza. Yeah. I think you have to read like five books or something like that. That's huge. Yeah. 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 In a month, wasn't it? A yeah. Month? Yeah. Yeah. Something yeah. It was just for a month. Oh, yeah. yeah. So, Leanne, are you volunteering to set this up? Or? I don't know. I don't know why my life is revolving around pizza tonight. Because pizza is very important. We should have been a pizza. There's multiple food groups in one slice of pizza. Yes. 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 yes, it is the perfect thing. It's the perfect thing. It really is. Again, I really yeah. hope I need to So I saw that you have other events at the library. First yeah. Saturdays are Cooks and Book. Yes. What yes. is that? Um, oh, because the adults. So we do have program also for the adults. Oh, and they can do summer reading as well. They can pick up a challenge sheet um, to so read get, certain things. Do we get coupons to get? And what they do is they earn, they, they earn, <laughs> not pizza, not little things, oh. but they uh, get entered into a raffle, um, and then to uh, we get gifts to local businesses and stuff. Okay. So, like, we did a lot with Jenny's or um, Bonnie and Clyde's right down the street, so we'll, we'll get, you know, uh, I guess should we get to there? <laughs> He's so cute, I can't. Um, but yeah, so we have um, the Cooks and Books program. Um, that is, we have so many cookbooks um, and so many different cool cookbooks too. So uh, we go through the cookbooks and we figure out a theme for that week and then um, our programming person comes, makes something and brings it in. And then the others, the people who want to attend can come in and talk about their favorite recipes look at some of the cookbooks we have and hopefully as it goes along because this is a very new one for us um, as it goes along you know people will start bringing in things and sharing so each at each um, program there'll be food mm -hmm. you know that they can yeah, actually right and and at the last cooks and books yes we, were you there yes i was there oh, yeah. it was great we had scones that the program coordinator brought in yes. and we were looking at different cookbooks scone recipes for this coming month, we've decided we're going to do something savory. It's going to have cheese in it. So whoever wants to come. Is it pizza? There you go. There you go. You just you bring something along to share. Or you don't have to. I mean, yeah. we just cut the ones over there kind of like, yeah, we'll make something that has cheese nice. in it and bring it in to share. Yeah. Because it's always better to talk about food when you have food to eat. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. So, yeah, you can yeah. make your own cookbook. With, pe with people's recipes. Yeah, yeah. 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 I have, she needs to come to work. I actually write <laughs> this down. I love to cook. So I, and I have like recipe books or whatever, and I kind of try and add my own twist to it. Yes. And, you know? Nice. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. That's on Saturdays. Uh, which Saturday of the month? Yeah. Yeah. Is it the last Saturday of the month? I think that one's the last. Okay. Yeah. And then um, other times during the month, we have um, Stitch and Pearl which is for people who do uh, crocheting, knitting, um, sewing, kinds of those, like that, yeah. yeah. 
um, to get together and just do their thing, and it's like a social thing. Right. And you can also, this week, on Thursday, Jane is going to be there, and she's a very good knitter. Mm. And she's going to help too much. <laughs> she's going to help people if they have some questions or anything okay, as well. Yeah. So, so advice, that's yeah. a fun one. Yeah. And then we also have Yes. Oh scrap. Oh scrap. Oh scrap. Oh scrap. Oh, scrap. Uh, <laughs> oh scrap, which is um, doing like uh, like paper scrapbooking right. or just paper crafts or whatever. Again, a social thing to come out and just meet people who like to do the same things that you do. So, trying to get some things out there to get people you know out again and meeting up with everybody because for you know a couple of years we didn't have. I mean, last summer we had our a really good turn out for our summer program again. So we're building it back up. Yeah, because these are really neat. Everything you're telling me is really neat. I didn't know about any of this stuff. I'm sure it's just because, you know, my day to day, I have routines. So if it's not something that, you know, pops up on my yeah. Facebook feed or something, yeah. that I don't right. know. Yeah. Um, but I this is on a website? Mm -hmm. yes. Yep, and we're on, and it's always on Facebook. We put things on Facebook. And also, we have an Instagram now. Oh, wow. So, hey. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it really yeah. took me all night to post something today, but that's because I was on the go. Yeah. And you were hitting potholes or something. No, I wasn't. <laughs> she was. I was the secretary. Okay. She was not. She was not. But uh, yeah, so we I try to post it there as much as I can. And uh, yeah. yeah and anything going. that's shareable, I'm, I mean, I'm sure there are parents looking for stuff to do with their kids this summer. Uh, yeah. I need to find something to do with myself this summer. So will there be so. story walks for adults and teens as well? Um, I don't know. There'll be like we're gonna try to like put components in there that are interesting to everybody. Right. But that's a really that's an interesting idea to do a teen thing, maybe even for a week or so. See, this is dangerous because if anybody gives me an idea, oh, she'll run with it. Then I have to go do it. <laughs> that's why we have all these great programs. That's why we have you on the show. We give so, you our ideas. Yeah, there you go. There you go. <laughs> um, but when you said about p parents looking for stuff for kids to do, um, if so, our programs are once a week for different age groups. We have three different age groups, so it's one program a week for each of them. But so if they're not convenient for the parent schedule or the family schedule, we also will have a drop-in. Um, activity that they can come in anytime we're open it's there you know they can do it as a family they can say hey do their friend come meet me this day and we're gonna you know right. do that so we have people that come in um, with the little kids come for play dates at the library because we have a lot of different um, educational toys and stuff yeah. out there and I wanted to ask you that too because so not gonna lie it's been a while since I was in a library so when I was in a library the last time it would have different things like VHSs that you could, <laughs> that you could take out. What mm -hmm. other things besides books do you have at the library? Well, we do still have DVDs. Okay, DVDs, not VHS. No. No. <laughs> no. And DVDs are even, you know, getting, but a lot of people still come in for them. We have books on, on CD, for those who still have CD players, like me in my old car. Um, but we also offer ebooks, which you can download onto any device. Um, and we offer e audio books. So if you go on to, it's called Libby, you download, and this is all also on the website. website. Um, you download the app, and then you, if you have to have a library card for that. Right. Then you put your library card information in, and you can download a book to take with you, you know, or an audio book. I love to have, listen to audio books when I'm gardening, you know, mm -hmm. cleaning. Um, so, you don't even have to come in. You have to come in and get your card, right. but then you can borrow things without even coming into the library. If you have a really busy schedule, you can't get there. So right. uh, we always say, we used to say in the day, I've been around a long time, but <laughs> when it first started, we were like, we're your library 24 seven, which is true. Yeah. It is true, yeah. especially with Libby. Yeah. You yeah. don't ever have to be without a book. Right. right. Yeah. You know, you can just log yeah. on, download and the book. And there's all books for all ages on there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh -huh. And we have tons and tons of other da databases. We have um, what's called book flicks for the little kids. They can go on and um, the book will, uh, you can read along with the book. It has uh, videos of the, of the books and stuff and then little quizzes you can take and games that you can play. Um, so it's kind of like screen time, but screen time, you know, that's more kind of yeah. structured and yeah. with a purpose there. Um, 
but we have tons of stuff online. I mean, there's stuff on there that I didn't even realize we have, and I, I find new things all the time on our databases. So if you're looking for the next book you want to read, we have, um, it's right out of my head, but we have, you can go on, on the website and it'll show you, um, you go onto that uh, database and you put in what you'd like to read and it gives you suggestions. Is that fiction? Mm, no. It's that's terrible. Yeah. Yeah, no, that's okay. Anyway, so like there's tons of things. If you ever have some time, just go on and check, and we have so much there. There's okay. language learning programs. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. All right, we're going to go to a commercial break, and we'll okay. be right back. Are there like games? Of the theory there? In the past five or games? Yeah, like, on the, like board games at the library? Ooh. Yeah. Uh, we do, we have board games. We are thinking about ways to, what to do with those right now. Um, we always have a puzzle out. I love puzzles. We, we have people who come in just for the puzzle now. Um, so we do have some board games. Um, also provides full service we're also looking into having like the game nights and spamming game nights. Yeah, yeah. 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 So now that I have some extra help, we're going to add a lot more programs um, because we have such a small staff, right? Um, it was, you know, all the programming was down to me. And I also have to do things like, you know, all the administrations, yeah, like order the books and, you know, pay the bills, all that, you know. Yeah. So now we have, we're going to, so we're also interested in people have any suggestions of what they would like us to do. We're, you know, we are open to listening to it. It's just yeah. over. And we're lucky now that we have of the addition of the library is larger, so we are able to have a group come in where I am going to do something. Yeah. Yeah. It's, 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 it's so much better. It's a beautiful addition. Yeah. It's yeah. really nice. But I am it it really pretty much doubled our public area. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. That's been open for three years now. Yeah. I didn't even get through all everything. We're at commercial, but we're still on. Yes, I yeah, but we're going to be back on. Okay. Because I have a, I have a really cool thing that's coming up this fall. And then also, oh, and I didn't mention the children, the little, little ones. And that has been, that's been great because, you know, with COVID, it was kind of, we couldn't do anything in the library for a while and everything. And now we've been back open for a year or more. And we see the little ones, you know, coming and then they stay as they get older. So that's been really nice. Yeah. Because I was like, oh my gosh, are we ever going to get the crowds back? You know? It's not a stuffy library like I remember when no. I was a yeah, yeah, when everyone's like, like Exactly. No, we don't have that. No, it's we actually built the built the addition and it echoes. <laughs> That's a huge you know. Um, but it's fine. Yeah, the kids kids have a good a good amount of room now that they can you know spend time and not talk to each other as well. Yeah, we have a community room so that we, when we want to have um, programs and meetings and stuff, there it's more comfortable as well. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it'd be fun to even do like open mic nights in there. Yes. So people would do like poems or songs. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. I'm going to come hang out with you guys. You should come see me. Will you, will you teach me how to knit? Sure. Yeah, I'm going to be on Facebook page tonight. Well, Andre here. Come on, you have to get out. Freya, come here. Freya. She's beautiful. How old is she? She's seven. Really? Yeah. She looks like a pup. Yeah. Freya, come here. She just All right, welcome back. <coughs> welcome back to Colossal Community Podcast. And we are talking here with, with the directors of the Lehighton Memorial Library. She's and sniffing your nuts. Come here. No, no she's okay. <laughs> <laughs> and we're talking about the events happening at the library and uh, yeah, one more oh, events Um, Yeah, so one of the things that we, we uh, added, I think, last year was toddler time, which is for zero, well, six months to about two years. And um, that's a lot of fun because, as I was saying during the break, we get them younger and then they just progress through right. all the programs. So that's also all summer long. That's on Fridays and on Wednesdays we have preschool story time. So that's a lot of fun too. That and looks really bad. I'm sorry. And during the summer we're gonna have like extra stuff with them as well, like some STEM that's at their level right. kind of thing. Um, and one of the things that I'm really excited about is we. We're part of another grant called the 20th Century Learning Hub, 
So this fall, we're going to be getting um, all kinds of more uh, computer coding and STEM packages. Oh, how, how do I want to describe it? Just different things that you can that you can learn how to code using, and we'll use that for a lot of different uh, programs. One of the things we're going to be getting is a 3D printer. Well, actually, two 3D printers. Oh, wow. Which is really cool. A bunch of iPads and stuff so that we can wow. do these bigger um, programs with the kids. And we have to go to training so that every time they give us these packages of stuff, we learn how to use it, you know. Um, and it's a lot of, a lot of emphasis on coding, but coding from like the bottom up, you know, from really little kids into, to older kids and um, taking you part in steps, so that's going to be a lot of fun. Can you teach my Nana how to use her cell phone? Yes. <laughs> yes. 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 We have a phone. No. David can teach anybody anything. Does she have an iPhone or a... No, it's, it's not an iPhone. Mm -hmm. They'll say track phone, because that's totally out yeah. of the mix. But no, but I'm glad you brought that up. An elderly computer class would be... Well, we ha we'll see what happened was, back in the day, we used to have computer classes, but now, Everybody has like, you know, their grandchildren or whoever to help them. So it's it's been more, the trend's been more one-on-one -on -one that they'll come in when they need something or they got a new computer or whatever. So we do have that. On Tuesday nights we have a woman who volunteers for us to help with those kinds of things. Um, anytime they pop in during the time that we're open, um, we have help for them on the computer. We do a lot of help with um, uh, job applications or people getting their pay stubs up, you know, all of a sudden they need it for a loan or something. Um, and that's hard to do if you haven't done it, you know. Right. Um, but we also then have, by appointment, you can make an appointment with a volunteer who is the most patient person on this mm -hmm. planet. He's my husband. Um, <laughs> but he has, he has helped a woman would bring in her computer when she got a new computer and he would set it up for her and stuff. So he, he'll do anything. He teaches teaches um, Excel, you know, spreadsheets and everything. So something like that even, he would come in and wow. sit and, and help with. Right. And I've helped a lot of people. So there's a shorter so list of things the library doesn't do. Yeah, there is, yeah. definitely. Yeah. They've, been yeah. For, yeah. Yeah, yeah. they've been on for a couple of years, and I think the events get more and more every yeah. year. So That's there really is a lot cool. to go on there. Yeah, and All if right. we don't do it now, if you ask us, we probably will. And if you have ideas, you can give yeah. them to her. All right, we do have some colossal right. radio news here. Uh, July 16th, they have a seafood boil for live entertainment from the dock from Colossal Radio. Uh, you do have to go into Hoffer Mill to make reservations for that. It includes, uh, I believe, cr crab legs, lobster, corn on the cob, and sausage, and all the other fixings that will be served on the tray. Again, you can go into the Hoffer Mill to reserve for that. Uh, also, coming up on Labor Day weekend is the second annual Jeep Fest held at the Offer Mill. You can go on to Colossal Radio's website, and if you have a Jeep, you can buy your tickets now for Jeep people only. Uh, they reserved 200 Jeeps, I believe, and there are different packages, food packages you can choose from. Again, that's all on Colossal Radio's website. And then once that deadline comes, people with uh, out a Jeep can actually buy tickets for that event as well. There's three bands this year, Burn the Jukebox, Blunt, and Psych. They'll be playing at the event, and benefits will help the Bauer Clinic and the Light and Fire Department. And back by popular demand, the Docks crew, Party Cruise is happening 2024 at the Bahamas. Uh, and then all the information is on the Colossal Radio website. Uh, please get your rooms booked now because I believe they are selling really quick. The dock is limited to 200 rooms and I think there's over like 50 rooms booked already. So mm -hmm. get that. Thank you guys for coming again and uh, we look forward you. to seeing all the events. Yep. Check out yep. our Facebook please page website. Please go on website. the Facebook website because we also even have book, a book club and things that actually have to do with this. Well, all right. I just wanted to put a plug out there too. If you're looking for some things to do this weekend in the Heighten, we're doing a movie in the park on Friday night when the sun goes down. We're playing in Kanto. Um, so that's always a, a favorite for the kiddos. And then on Saturday, we have a Bohemian Market 
from nine to two and it's full of like fun boho kind of vendors so you know get your new age on all right where's that right in the park in Brighton. all right that's going to do it for our show tonight and we'll see you next time we hope you enjoyed tonight's colossal community podcast no.